This time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions, I get the sack from Del Boy's Garage. Well, g'day everybody and welcome back. Yes, uh, I got the sack from Del Boy's Garage. He doesn't like me very much. But that's cool. Um, I sat on this video for over a week now. Uh, I actually re recorded it once already, and then I actually uploaded it to YouTube as an unlisted video, and I thought about it, and I didn't like it, so I took it down, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to go through it again. If you think back, there was a, a video that I did on um, how to remove corroded bolts from your motorcycle, and in that video I made a comment about uh, Del Boy's Garage and the fact that I had left a comment on his page and he had replied rather angrily and then deleted it. Well, it's been brought to my attention that I'm not alone in that. Uh, in fact, I was watching a video by Matt at the workshop uh, last weekend and he mentioned that one of his subscribers had a similar uh, experience with Del Boy. So anyway, it was that particular conversation was around uh, an Evans waterless coolant video that Del Boy had done and a subsequent video that he did around like frequently asked questions about Evans. So I went on there to have, satisfy my own curiosity and oh my god, uh, he was telling people to do something that was very, very stupid and um, in fact would put their motorcycle and potentially themselves at risk. So I felt I had to respond. So I, I, I left a comment on the video and left it at that. But it turns out that my comments aren't visible by the general public because he has marked me as spam because that's his MO. He's uh, protecting his brand. Uh, well, Del Boy, the best thing you can do to protect your brand is to be open and honest and actually do some research before you go shooting your fat trap off. So essentially this was on one of the videos that he did, the, the Q&A, or Frequently Asked Questions. Um, he, was, he incorporated into one of his Street Fighter build videos. If you've seen that thing, it looks like hammered dog shit. But anyway, that's, uh, that's another thing, beauty in the eye of the beholder and all of that. But in uh, getting back to the story, I left the comment, it's not visible by the public, he doesn't want people responding on his webs on his uh, videos if it's controversial or paints him or any of the products he's trying to promote in a bad light. So stuff him. I'll do it here. The key reason that I'm doing this is because, uh, look, I'm just as guilty as the next guy of giving bad advice or saying the wrong thing. I get terribly muddled up and I call things wrong names and do, but I mean, ultimately, I know that the substance of, of my videos uh, are genuine and that um, I won't post anything if I'm not confident that I understand what I'm talking about. That doesn't seem to be the case with Del Boy. Now, on this particular video, he was talking about the Evans waterless coolant. He he made some pretty brash statements. First one was he, he looked down the camera and he said how bad ethylene glycol was for the environment. And thank God Evans have got this miracle formula that, you know, isn't going to continue to pollute the environment like ethylene glycol does and that it, uh, we all need to be moving that way for the future. Del Boy, all you have to do is go to Google and type in Evans waterless coolant SDS and, and I've done it and I found the... Uh, the safety data sheet, scroll down to the to the chemical composition of um, of Evans waterless coolant, and guess what? It's 80 to 85 percent ethylene glycol. So that just goes to show you the level of research that the bloke does. Um, he then, what really got up my nose though, was he then went on to um, explain how in the cooling system on the Ninja that he was working on. Uh, because we run this inferior product called water in our cooling systems, uh, it has this horrible, nasty habit of wanting to expand when it gets hot, as does everything, Del Boy, including Evans. Um, but he kept 
referring to, he, he made a reference to um, a kettle. Uh, water boils at 100 degrees um, in your cooling system, just like it does in a kettle. Well, no, it doesn't, the old boy. Yes, water does boil at 100 degrees, uh, and Evans keep pushing that barrier too. But they got around that problem by putting a thing called a radiator cap onto a cooling system, which puts the system under pressure, which increases the boiling temperature. The, the, phase, the transition phase to gas. So it doesn't boil at 100 degrees in a cooling system, pressurised cooling system. That's point number one. Point number, then he decided that um, he was going to omit this thing that he called an overflow tank off the motorcycle. Uh, he sat there and explained that there are header tanks and there are overflow tanks. Header tanks um, sit up high on the bike and overflow tanks sit low on the bike and he's you'll know if you've got a header tank because it's got a pressure cap on it and generally they put the header tank uh, in a serviceable area like if you've got a, a radiator that's tucked in behind fairings and shoved up under, a, under out of the way it's difficult to service so put a remote header tank on it that makes it easier to service um, but the overflow tank, and then he referred to the overflow tank, and his ex explanation for this plastic bottle that was stuck to the side of his Kawasaki Ninja was that as your temperature increases because of this inferior water nonsense, it expands and um, blows out through the radiator cap, and it'll continue to puke into this bottle until that bottle becomes brimful, and then that bottle overflows onto the ground. So what he had was um, a radiator, with a cap, and now that cap is, an is a hose that went into uh, this bottle that he called an overflow bottle. And then he said they fitted a, even fitted an overflow hose so that it could fill up with fluid from the radiator as it heats up and then overflow. What a load of crap. What is actually happening here is this is an expansion bottle. That is not an overflow hose, that is an atmospheric vent to keep atmospheric pressure in the, in the reservoir. So what happens is the temperature increases in the radiator because it's absorbing heat from your engine, which is what it's meant to do, and then as it expands, of course, the pressure in the system increases, but to maintain a safe system pressure, it relieves the pressure via the cap, just like a pressure relief valve on a boiler. Maintain safe system pressure. The fluid is able to work its way down the hose into the expansion bottle and expand as it, as it gets hot. That's what it's meant to do, Del Boy. And then he went, so what he did, he made a, he arbitrarily decided that because he runs Evans and Evans is brilliant, that you don't need that overflow bottle. You can omit that and just run your hose onto the ground. Radio, and then he, he admitted that Evans expands, so he said, you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do is run a lower level in your radiator to allow for expansion, and you don't need this puke bottle, and you don't, you know, have any issues with, um, with the Evans coming out of the radiator. Well, a couple of problems with that. Evans waterless coolant struggles enough to get the temperature out of your engine. In fact, it can't do it efficiently at all. By running the radiator level lower, you've lowered the, the height in the header tank and that is now no longer, that level is now no longer higher than the highest cooling jacket in your engine. So you end up getting bloody vapour lock in your, in your system and will cause your engine to overheat. And if you don't lower it enough, it's going to expand, run out this tube, and onto the bloody ground, ethylene glycol, onto the ground. It doesn't evaporate very well, so it's toxic, bad for the environment, and it's slippery as all hell. And if you get it on your tyres, you're going to go ass up. Del Boy? Seriously. All right, here's the concept that Del Boy seemed to have the most trouble understanding. The basic function of a radiator cap. This, um, this green area represents the neck of your radiator and the black area represents the cap. There are two seals in a radiator cap. There is the top seal that seals on the top of the neck of your radiator 
um, neck. And then there's the bottom seal that sits down in the bottom and is held in place by a pressure spring. And it's 13 psi, 15 psi, whatever pressure your system's designed to run at, that's what the spring is managing. So you've got a radiator full of fluid, no air in there, so it's nice and nice and happy, and we don't have air locks in our in our cooling system. And as it heats up and expands, the pressure builds, and the and the seat will lift, the seal will lift off the seat, and allow the um, the fluid to escape via a, a, a a tube that's located between these two seals and off to your overflow, your expansion tank, overflow tank, got me saying it now, goes off to your expansion tank and expands. This is the concept that Delvoy couldn't understand. There is another valve within a radiator cap and it sits on the underneath side, on the radiator side of this seal. It has its own spring and it opens that away. So as the temperature in the radiator cools um, after the engine's been shut down, it starts to cool back down again and that produces a lower pressure in the radiator as it, as it condenses down and that lifts that off the seat and allows the fluid to siphon back from your expansion bottle back into your radiator to keep your system brimful. It is not a puke tank. It is not an overflow tank. It is an expansion tank. Now, if you're going to go and do videos on, if you don't understand basic function of something as simple as a cooling system, you really shouldn't be out there spruiking off about it. And you shouldn't be spruiking off about Evans either. It's 80-85% ethylene glycol. It has very poor heat transfer properties. So the specific heat is really bad. It can't get the temperature away from your engine components efficiently. And equally, it can't dissipate that heat via your radiator into the atmosphere. So it stays hot. One of the other things that Del Boy said was, your temperature gauge will, will indicate that your engine is running hotter. But it simply means that Evans is pulling more heat away. Think about it. He actually said that. Think about it. Oh my God. Your temperature gauge is showing hotter because your engine's running hotter. You muppet. It can't, get, can't absorb the heat. It can't dissipate the heat. So just to say it's soaking up, it, yeah, it won't boil at 100 hundred whatever degrees under pressure, it won't boil. You can boil, heat it up to 300 and something degrees, but your engine's still 300 and something degrees. I mean, you'll get to that 150, 180, 190 terrible, terrible damage-causing temperatures running that crap. So do yourself a favour and don't. If you've got any doubts, uh, Matt from the workshop did a fantastic video on um, where he actually got, I think it was probably glycol he used but anyway he did an experiment with Evans with water and with just glycol that he got from the chemist and um, it'll show, it shows you how poor the heat transfer rate is with that stuff so I'll pop a link in the description and you can go along and watch that if you're interested and I suggest that you do if you're thinking about Evans. As for me that's it for me from Del Boy. I'm, I'm Never going to go back to his channel and watch any of his videos. He's actually deleted, I'd say off the back of Matt's videos, uh, that he's probably copped a fair bit of flack and he's, and he's over it. So he's typical Del Boy fashion. Instead of, uh, you know, manning up and doing a video and saying, hey, you know, I might have misled people and I'm sorry about that. He's just deleted the videos. Um, so you can't even see them anymore. So good on you, Del Boy. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in Matt's, uh, Evans waterless coolant videos and the um, experiments etc and what he's got to say on it I'll put the links in the description I suggest you check it out because it's worth looking at uh, but as for me no I don't care about Del Boy if you're if you're a fan of Del Boy's great go and enjoy his videos nobody's saying that you shouldn't but you know, I certainly won't be going back there I've uh, had, a, had a quick look at a few of his and 
he speaks with such confidence you actually believe what he, he you believe that he understands what he's talking about but i can tell you that a very high percentage of what he talks about he has no understanding he's making it up as he goes along so um that's the last like i said it's the last you'll hear about it from me uh we'll get back to what we do best um but i had to get that off my chest because nothing worse than um people falsely misrepresenting um products or even their own knowledge anyway that's it for me rant i'll probably cop a heap of heat over this but that's okay um don't forget to like subscribe and comment and we'll be back with more from andy's motorcycle obsessions bye for now